1997 Chevy Blazer with a 4.3 liter engine. And what we have is a no start. Some uh, things that were already checked. Uh, it has good spark. And so we're gonna go in the direction of fuel. We put some propane into the intake and the vehicle fires on propane so we know it's a fuel issue. The interesting part when we put propane into this intake is it actually started and ran and continued to run, which is, which is kind of unusual. Um, you know, lack of fuel, you would think you shut the propane off and the engine's gonna stall, which is pretty typical of say a fuel pump failure or injectors that aren't firing. But in this case, it continued to run after we shut the propane off. So our next step, what we wanna do in particular on this model is we wanna measure fuel pressure. And um, I'm just, we have a gauge connected already. And uh, can one of you guys go ahead and crank that for me and we'll take a reading of what this fuel pressure looks like. Okay, good. All right, you see our fuel pressure was around 35 cranking, about 42 right now. And on a typical system, this kind of pressure would be enough. And so with this kind of pressure, um, what we would maybe do next is go after injection pulse. Not the case on this model. This model uses, um, no, this is actually a central port injection system and it, it uses mechanical injector poppet nozzles and, and electronic injectors. Um, I have information on this in my, in my book. You know, we'll be going over that later. Uh, fuel injector designs, um, fuel system designs. This is a CPI system. These systems need a minimum of 50 pounds of pressure to open the poppet nozzles. So you can have the electrical injectors firing all day long, but they're not spraying fuel until you hit 50 pounds of pressure on this vehicle. So what happens in this case, two things I'm, I'm gonna hope I can show you, is one, when we put propane in it, the vehicle is gonna start on propane, then charging system voltage gets higher, and now we're putting two, three, four volts higher than cranking at the fuel pump, and so that's gonna give it enough oomph to bring the pressure up above 50 and have the vehicle run. So we'll attempt to do that first. So let's go ahead and uh, let's put some propane in the intake and see if we can catch that part. So I'll show you what we're doing there first. Uh, we have the uh, intake air temp sensor removed. Go ahead and put the propane into that, into that port. So we're behind the mass airflow sensor in where the intake air temp sensor goes. Uh, and I'm gonna focus you guys on the fuel pressure gauge. Um, I'll tell you when to start doing it. Okay, go ahead, propane and crank it. Okay, shut the propane off. You see the reason the vehicle is continuing to run is we have over 50 pounds of pressure now and that's what's gonna keep this thing running. Now if we do some snap throttle tests, uh, they're not gonna pass the snap throttle test. Let me try it. So we got a bog through the intake, those are all symptoms of not enough fuel. We got a weak pump, that's what the problem is on this vehicle. Go ahead and shut that off. All right, go ahead and, um, go ahead and crank that again. Shut it off. And this is another symptom with, when these fuel pumps start to go bad on these vehicles is uh, the customer will actually you know, carry around a can of propane or carry a can of brake clean, carb clean with them and, and, you know, do it one time the first start of the day from this problem and it'll continue to run. Kind of unusual, but uh, it's all centralized around this low pressure. Uh, to justify what we just saw, if you think about cranking voltage, cranking voltage, especially on a weak battery, you're talking nine, 10 volts cranking that are going back to that fuel pump as opposed to 14, 14 and a half with the engine running. So we put propane in the intake. That's enough for the engine to run on the propane, then charging voltage rises, and that allows the pump with that higher voltage to produce the pressure that's needed. Um, if I bleed this out, probably gonna recreate this, uh, this no start condition. Should be able to recreate this no start condition. Go ahead, crank that again. 
Keep cranking. Okay, so you see this thing's not gonna start with 42, 43 pounds of pressure because of those poppet nozzles. Something else that sometimes works, and I'm not sure it will, but we're gonna try it, is uh, we're gonna actually put a battery charger on this. So another symptom that you might get from, from a customer with this problem is it's a no start, and, and clearly it's not a dead battery. But what they might tell you is, if I jump start it, the vehicle will start up, which is kind of unusual. Why would you jump start an engine or a battery that's cranking an engine perfectly fine? And if you think about it, again, it's a voltage number that's available to the fuel pump, so we're gonna try it. We have a battery charger on here. I'm gonna throw it on a, on a uh, high amperage start mode on this charger. So we got, we're on, on a, basically a jump start mode on this. And let's see what this does with the charger. I mean, it's really not gonna change what we're gonna do, but it's another symptom you wanna look for. Go ahead and crank this. All right, let, let it off. Try it again. That was pretty close. Again. All right, still not enough. But still, it's something to consider if you guys get these vehicles in with, with low fuel pressure on these CPI systems with these mechanical injectors, half electrical, half mechanical, is number one, can of carb clean on the seat, good indication you got a fuel pump problem. Number two is they say if I jump start it, it will start. Unique to this system, you need at least 50 pounds of pressure for these things to fire. And so clearly we have a weak pump. Our next process or next steps for this would be to check pump power and ground and we can do that. But truthfully for, for this part, this is what I want, wanted you guys to see. These systems will not start below 50 pounds of pressure. Okay, we're gonna do a fuel pump current test on this just because we have low pressure and we're trying to uh, determine whether or not we need to crawl underneath this vehicle and check power and ground. And I've shown this on other videos. What we wanna do is use this test connector, this fuel pump test connector. This is unique to GM and we're gonna jump direct battery voltage into that from this little power distribution center right here. All right, so we're going from this fuel pump test connector. As you see that alligator clip on that side and we're going to this junction box. So we're jumping direct battery voltage into this pump circuit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to clip an amp probe around that wire. Go ahead and clip that around it. So uh, we're on a, set on a 20 amp scale. Polarity is important. Uh, we'll know by our pattern if we're upside down or not. Okay, good. And I'm going to focus you guys on the Varus here. We're using the Varus for this test. And uh, what we're looking at in this, let me just back up for a second, I guess, and show you what I picked for this test. I picked a, uh, go back out of here. Um, I picked my lab scope. I picked low amp 20, so the scales are all set up. Uh, this is on a 10 millisecond time base. And what we're looking at here is the armatures in the fuel pump. Each hump represents uh, an armature of this electric motor. Um, on this system, on good ones, what we want to see is around 8 to 10 amps of current flow and what we're seeing is about 4 to 5 amps. Now our battery voltage is probably a little bit low, but seeing 4 to 5 amps, that means that I can't shortcut this and I'm going to have to go underneath the vehicle and do some checks. If, if amperage was normal and pressure was low, then that would eliminate the need for me to have to check power and ground. But because amperage is low, there is the potential that we have a bad ground. Probably not, most likely just a bad pump, but being that my amperage is low on this one, I'm gonna have to check it. If this was a conventional fuel system that ran 30 to 40 pounds of pressure and I see four to five amps of current, I'm not even gonna bother checking pump power and ground. It's good. But because this one is high pressure, runs eight to 10 amps, I'm probably gonna be a good idea to do that. Uh, there's some other things you can do with this. You can actually take these waveforms, 
uh, we can we can uh, increase our time base a little bit to see a little bit more repetition. Uh, you can freeze picture and you can pull cursors in and you can you can measure between uh, armatures and you can calculate the fuel pump RPM and really that's not important for what we're doing right now. Our main focus here was do we need to crawl underneath the car and check powers and grounds? And I'm saying yes we do because our amperage is low. Um, I'm going to turn this battery charger back on and see what it looks like with a little bit more voltage to it. That's with 40 amps. So you see the amperage come up a little bit. Still not what it should be. Looking like a bad pump. Let's just make sure we got a good power and ground. Okay, so we're going to go underneath this vehicle and we're going to do power and ground check. Nice thing about having this thing jumped is we don't need to crank the engine over. The circuit's already active. On a typical pump system, you would need to crank the engine over while you're checking power and ground. So we'll put the car up in the air and check it. This is where it's important to be safe about what you're doing. We're using a jumper wire, a fused jumper wire. If we weren't using a fused jumper wire, what could happen while you're up in the air, if this side of this alligator clip jumped off and touched ground, it's going to catch on fire while you're up in the air doing your check. So it's important when you do this procedure that you're using a fuse jumper wire. You can't see the fuse, it's behind the Varus here. Uh, but we need to be safe about what we're doing. Fuse jumper wire just to protect us in case something happens. So we're going to leave this jumped. We don't have to crank the engine over. We have plenty of time. Check power, check ground on this fuel pump circuit. Okay, unfortunately on this design, it's uh, very difficult to get to the wiring for the pump. You can see the plastic lines right here, um, just to the left. The wiring harness is actually right here where my hand is and goes on the other side of the tank. So without dropping the tank, it's, it's pretty much impossible to do a power and ground check right here at the unit. So what we're going to do is in two places, uh, one is the ground is in this harness and we're going to uh, measure the ground voltage right there because the ground goes back to this cross member uh, on this back part of the vehicle. They're known for having ground issues, so we'll check the ground right there. We'll do a voltage drop test on that. And then the power feed wire uh, kind of sucks to, to do it this way, but we don't really have much of a choice. Uh, the feed wire, what we're going to do is we're going to check the feed wire right here at this harness. This sits right below the fuel filter. And nice to know wire colors for GMs. We've got a purple, we've got a gray. Uh, this gray wire is the pump feed. Nice that GM uses a uniform color for their fuel pumps on all their year make and model cars. Um, I say all of them, I don't know about, you know, 2012 model year, but they've used the gray wire for their fuel pump forever. So we're gonna use a uh, a tool to adapt to this and I know this is not ideal, but I do not have a choice in this case I'm going to take a reading on this power feed wire and make sure I have battery voltage here We have our pump energized with our jumper wire And uh, we're going to take a reading right here Okay again connections real quick got my positive lead connected to the pump feed wire pump circuit is energized using our fuse jumper up top Scope ground connected to a known good ground. We tested that before we used it. Come down here to our meter. And you see we have 11.42 volts on that. Again, our battery's getting weak, so we know our feed is good, at least to this point. Uh, as far as dropping the tank goes, you'd want to check the rest of the harness very closely once the tank's on the ground, but that is a good power feed to the pump. We need to check the pump ground now. Okay, so we're back by the filler neck now. This harness that runs back to the back of the vehicle contains the rear lighting harness. There is a black wire in this part that you can check your ground on, and it's only one black wire, and it actually runs up and actually bolts to the this cross member underneath right at this bolt location on top. You can't see it, but that's where the pump ground goes. We're gonna do a voltage drop test. We're gonna go ground to ground, and we wanna see uh, only a few hundred millivolts at most on this ground. If we see higher than that, then that would mean we have a bad ground. 
Okay, again, using a piercing tool underneath the car, not ideal. We will uh, put some uh, RTV over that when we're done. Um, and our ground. Now the thing is, when you're using doing a ground-to-ground -ground test, is how do you know that that's a good ground? Well, one of the ways you can identify is look at your scope. Uh, it helps to to use a scope for this. And um, I'm going to show you what this looks like without a ground. This is me taking the ground off of the vehicle. I've shown you guys this in other videos. That shake your leads and look for hash and things like that. You see, I'm definitely not connected. I'm holding the ground in my hand. And uh, what I'm going to do is connect this back up and show you what that looks like on the screen. And that might look like I'm connected. You see that I'm connected on the vehicle, but you look at the screen, that is not a good connection. All that hash and noise in there is not good. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to wiggle it and I'm going to squeeze it and you see kind of getting a good ground and not, now we have a good ground. That's the way you can tell, one way you can tell and you see our ground voltage on this running pump circuit is 0 0.073, um, that is a good number, that would be 73 millivolts. Um, 100 millivolts on less or less on sensor grounds for electric motors that draw a lot of amperage like this one, you know, we're drawing five, six amps, that's a really good ground to have that low of a number. I don't mind seeing 200 millivolts, maybe 300 millivolts on a motor ground, uh, but in this case, good power, good ground, low amperage, low pressure, we got a bad pump. Uh, one other question that I think uh, that we can we can handle here is um, could it just be a bad f uh, fuel filter? Could the fuel filter be plugged up? And I'm saying by the result of our testing uh, that no, it's not going to be from a plugged filter. A plugged fuel filter is going to increase amperage. You're going to have higher than normal amperage on this fuel pump circuit and we saw lower than normal amperage. So based on the fact that we have a good power and a good ground, we have low amperage and we have low pressure, I'm saying putting a fuel filter in this vehicle will not help. So certainly there is that variable, put a fuel filter in it, retry it, not necessary in this case. This thing's going to get a new pump and we're going to put a fuel filter in it anyway on principle, but that's it, bad pump.